Hi everyone, I'm Gio. Most of us have experienced a time or two when we didn't have the password to access our Avaya Media Gateway. Today I'm going to show you how to access your Avaya Media Gateway by using the backdoor password, but please note this only works on gateways running CM6 or older firmware versions. Then we're going to set our gateway back to factory default and finally I'm going to show you how to change the IP address on your Avaya Media Gateway. To get started, we have to connect to our gateway via the services port. I have two network cables. The RAID cable is a crossover cable connected between the services port and my PC. And the yellow cable is a straight through ethernet cable connected between the LAN port on my media gateway and my router. On my PC, I have changed my network adapter settings and configure an IP address of 192.11.13.5 with subnet mask 255.255.255.252. To access the media gateway, I'm going to use the services port IP address of 192.11.13.6. I'm going to enter the backdoor password to access the gateway. Please note that this password only works if you are connected to the services port and it no longer works on CM7 firmware versions. The password is GGDASEUAIMHRKE. Now that I have accessed the gateway, I'm going to run the NVRAM initialize command to reset the gateway to factory default. After the warning message, I'm going to type Y for yes. The MG has been restored and I'm going to log back into the gateway and configure my gateway parameters. After you run the MVRAM initialize command, the gateway reboots and at this point it has finished rebooting and I'm back at the login prompt. I'm going to log in as root and enter the default password of root. Next, I'm going to set up my new password. I'm done setting up my new password and now the system is asking me if I want to run the configuration script and I'm going to type Y for yes and configure my new network parameters. Under VLAN, I'm going to press enter to leave the default option. For IPv4 enable, I'm going to type Y for yes. Now I'm going to enter my IP address. Next, I'm going to type enter to accept the current subnet mask. I'm going to press enter to accept the default gateway. I'm not going to enable IPv6, so I'm going to type N for no. Under MGC controllers, I'm going to input the IP address of my communication manager PE address. Next, I'm going to configure the host name of my media gateway. Now we're done configuring our parameters and I'm going to type Y to save the changes and reset the media gateway. The gateway rebooted and I'm now logged in using my LAN connection. Next, I'm going to type show run to display the configuration. If you look at interface VLAN 1, you can see the IP address I programmed. If we look below, we can see the default gateway in the media gateway controller. If you ever have the need to change the IP address of your media gateway, you have to be connected to the services port and you have two options. You can run the NVRAM initialize command to reconfigure your gateway. If for whatever reason you only need to change the IP address, I'm going to show you the following steps. I'm going to exit my gateway and log back in via the services port. Next, I'm going to type interface VLAN 1 to get into the VLAN 1 configuration mode. Next, I'm going to delete the current IP address by typing no IP address. Next, I'm going to add my new IP address by typing IP address 192.168.1.120 along with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. PMI and ICCC VLAN are already set on this interface so I don't have to run those commands. I'm going to exit the interface VLAN 1, then I'm going to save my changes by typing copy run start. Changes have been saved, now I'm going to reset my media gateway. The media gateway has finished rebooting and now I'm logged in via my LAN network using my new IP address. This completes our tutorial and I hope you found this helpful. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave me a comment below and thank you for watching Geo's via how to and stay tuned for new videos.